before you can attempt a renovation project on a building that's falling apart like this one behind me over here you need to know what that building is made up of you need to order the right supplies and get them delivered on site the human body is one of the most complex pieces of machinery on the planet we cannot renovate our health or our bodies unless we provide the right supplies to each and every cell of the body the body has an incredible capacity to heal to replace broken cells, to fix the broken pieces. But we need to provide the right supplies. I invite you to get your work clothes on, to put your thinking cap on and come and rethink with us how we can renovate our health. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Health Rethink. Welcome back to my office. Um, I'm going to try and get this video done this morning before our neighbors are awake because they tend to use power tools and all sorts of noisy things. Hopefully our only competition with sound this morning will be the rooster in the neighbor's yard. Um, I wanted to do this follow-up video from the video that we've done previously because we had spoken about blood circulation as being so important for good health. We spoke about how we needed to have good quality blood flowing through open arteries and veins with good flow, with a good push of blood that actually reaches everywhere. And the reason why this is so important is, as we mentioned, because blood is the transport medium through which we deliver all the ingredients that cells need. We have to deliver oxygen, nutrients, which includes minerals, vitamins. Um, our energy has to be delivered to the cells in the form of glucose. Protein, fats have to be delivered. All of these different ingredients, as well as the removal of waste products, happens through the transport medium of blood. And this happens in the highway system called the blood vessels or this piping network of arteries and veins and capillaries. So today I want to focus a little bit more on the technicalities, on the little details of what happens when those ingredients are delivered to the cells. Where does it happen? It happens in the capillaries. Capillaries is just another word for the tiny, tiny little blood vessels in the body. Those are the tiny blood vessels that actually get right up close and personal, right next to the cells to facilitate that delivery of ingredients. So I'm going to show you a couple of pictures this morning. And the first picture I'll show you is this one where we see an illustration. And it is a simplified illustration, but a good illustration nonetheless. We see a capillary. We see the little gaps in the wall of the capillary, as the, the capillary is also made up of different cells. And then we see the um, example cells all around that capillary and as you can see through the gaps in the capillary wall things are transported we've got nutrients oxygen food substances transported into the cells and then we have carbon dioxide and other waste products that will be removed from the cells taken back into the bloodstream and that is taken to the different places where it is um, eliminated out of the body this system is so beautifully made god says in the bible well, David says in the Bible, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This system is so crucial to function well. If capillaries are not in good health, this entire system of exchange cannot work as it's supposed to work. Different factors can influence the system of exchange. As you can see here, you've got a blood vessel and it's really close together um, or closely connected with the different cells. If you've got swelling, for instance, if you have edema in that area where you've got fluid that pushes the cells away from the capillary wall, exchange will not happen as it's supposed to happen. If you have um, a, a large quantity of fat cells building up in between the capillary and the other tissue cells, those fat cells will be a barrier so that exchange cannot happen at, as it is supposed to. Various factors influence that exchange process, but in the healthy good, perfect condition. Capillaries are closely connected with the different cells of different tissues in the body, be it skin cells, kidney cells, lung cells, nervous cells, all the different cells. And these capillaries then provide a way for ingredients to be delivered um, and exchange happening there with the cells. Now, what are the factors that are going to cause this exchange not to happen as it's supposed to happen? One of the major factors, we've already mentioned some of them, but one of the major issues with this exchange process is if the blood cannot actually reach the capillaries. And 
if the blood is blocked in its flow, of course, poor, poor quality blood is a different story on its own. But if the blood cannot flow through these arteries and veins, we have a major issue. So if there are multiple inflammatory products in the blood, if the blood contains chemicals that are inflammatory, if it contains food particles that are inflammatory, if it contains abnormal proteins that are inflammatory, various factors in the blood can cause inflammation where the blood itself burns the inside of the arteries and the veins and burns the capillaries to the point of causing little tears or little lesions. Amongst other things, one of the major inflammatory things that happen is when the blood sugar is constantly high or doesn't even have to be constant. Every time the blood sugar spikes up above the normal levels, blood um, sugar will actually not dissolve properly at that high concentration and it will result in these little crystals of blood, of crystals of sugar that physically scar the inside of arteries and veins. So factors like high blood sugar levels, factors like all these other inflammatory things that can be in blood will result in inflammation inside the blood vessels This is a very simplified illustration once again, but it is an illustration of a cholesterol plaque. Now, why cholesterol plaque? I've just mentioned blood sugar, and now I'm saying cholesterol plaque. Cholesterol is often wrongfully blamed for being um, the cause of inflammation. Cholesterol is a band-aid that the body uses when there's already inflammation in a blood vessel. When there's a little tear or something that has caused inflammation on the inside of a blood vessel, cholesterol comes and it sits over that tear or inflamed patch like a band-aid. And very often cholesterol is blamed as causing cholesterol plaques and causing blockages. But what we have to ask ourselves is, what was the inflammation in the first place that resulted for cholesterol or, or that resulted in cholesterol coming to make a patch over that area of inflammation? Now let's quickly look at the process that happens here. In the first picture, you've got blood flowing freely. There's no inflammation in that blood vessel. With time, if there are processes that cause inflammation in a blood vessel, cholesterol will come and sit over that area. But as you can see in that middle um, illustration, cholesterol is not actually sitting in the lumen of the blood vessel. It is integrated into the wall. When cholesterol comes and patches over an inflamed area, various chemical processes happen, and with time, that cholesterol plaque, as we call it, or that cholesterol patch, actually integrates and it migrates. The cholesterol molecules migrate into the wall of the blood vessel. And as it migrates in there, it forms a cholesterol plaque sitting there. And with time, more and more cholesterol will migrate in if that inflammation in that area is not resolved and reversed. So you've got cholesterol going in and more cholesterol going in. And ultimately, the cholesterol patch on the inside raises the blood vessel wall pushes it into the lumen and causes this obstruction. And this middle picture illustrates very clearly that there's already an obstruction happening there. There's blood that flows to that area and it actually cannot get past and you've got reduced blood circulation on the other side of that obstruction. It is so vital for us to understand that this cholesterol plaque is integrated into the wall of the blood vessel because you can't just put drain cleaner down this pipe and it washes out the cholesterol or it washes out the inflammation. You've got an inflammatory process sitting there that is part and partial of the wall of the blood vessel. Very difficult to reverse. The final picture at the bottom shows what happens when this cholesterol buildup and the inflammation continues for a long period of time and the inflammation becomes so bad that actually you end up with patches of this cholesterol plaque that breaks off. And that can travel through the blood causing major, major problems. You also end up with a obstruction that is so severe, and then obviously, as it's not well illustrated in this picture, the um, the surface of that cholesterol plaque remains inflamed. It's like a raw wound, almost like a like a fresh scrape with a scab on it. It sits like that there, and you end up with um, blood tissue or, or blood flowing to that area, actually getting stuck on that area, forming blood clots and causing a major obstruction. So this process of a cholesterol plaque buildup in the system, causes severe inflammation, it reduces blood flow through that um, blood vessel, 
and ultimately will re result in localized inflammation where the cholesterol plaque is stuck, but also a reduced blood flow to whatever is sitting on the other end of that um, blood vessel. This is a super dangerous process. And the sad reality is it is a silent process for the majority of the time. While this is happening, we are unaware of it. There are no um, pain sensors in these areas. We don't have a sensation of blockages. You cannot feel your arteries and your veins being blocked up. And yet this process can happen not just in one or two places, but it can happen scattered out throughout the entire body. So we have an inflammatory process that happens in capillaries, in arteries and veins, that can happen all over the body. We are often not aware of it. It is completely silent. And sometimes at the point that we start seeing poor blood circulation, like a reduction of blood circulation into the feet or into the hands, constantly seeing cold feet or hands, um, other telltale signs could be blindness, where the, where the blood circulation has been so badly compromised in the back of the eye that the nerve and the retina is damaged. So some, somebody can re, um, experience reduction in vision. Sometimes they experience um, other symptoms like dizziness or headaches when this process is happening in the brain. Sometimes they will experience chest pain when this blockage happens in the arteries that supply the heart muscle with nutrients. Then the heart muscle isn't receiving what it's supposed to receive in terms of nutrients and oxygen. So people can experience chest pains where the heart muscle starts cramping. Various symptoms can happen when this process is severe, but while it's not very severe, the body compensates enough for us to be completely unaware of this process happening. This is so important to understand because the bottom line is that we have to prevent this process from happening in the first place. Now, how do we prevent this? Do we prevent it by taking away cholesterol? No, the cholesterol has not been the cause of the problem. The cholesterol is part of the patch. Cholesterol is not the primary cause of heart disease and brain disease and um, poor blood circulation. Cardiovascular disease is caused by inflammation. What are the processes of inflammation? As we mentioned already, diabetes or um, regular blood sugar spikes, high blood pressure, um, Smoking is a severe cause of inflammation, but those well-known ones are, as I say, well-known. Many people don't realize that basics in our everyday lifestyle can contribute to this inflammatory process in the body. Bad habits like poor sleep, regularly going to bed late at night, um, poor quality of sleep, going to sleep with a full stomach of food, um, poor eating habits where we constantly have inflammation released with chemicals or um, inflammatory chemicals released from the food in our, in our gut, poor sunlight exposure, poor rest, um, dehydration. Oh, dehydration is such a major cause of inflammation. All of these different general lifestyle habits result in inflammation of the blood vessels. And inflammation on the inside of that blood vessel will result in inflammatory molecules coming to patch that inflammation and ultimately you end up with this cholesterol plaque. So what is the take home message? We want to keep the arteries and the veins open. We want arteries and veins that look similar to this picture. This is just a graphic illustration. Blood has multiple components, not just red blood cells like on this picture, but it's a beautiful illustration of an open blood vessel with blood flowing through there without any obstruction. That is our goal. Our goal is to make sure that we have nothing causing inflammation on the inside of our arteries and our veins. We want to equip ourselves with the knowledge of tools that reduce inflammation. We are going to start working on this in our next videos. We're going to go step by step through the New START principles, which we've mentioned briefly in some other videos. New START is an acronym for nutrition, exercise, water, etc., etc. We're going to unpack those New START principles in more detail talking about how we can use our day-to-day -day routine to reduce inflammation and to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. To end our video for today, I'd like to share a quote with you written many years ago in the 1800s, but it summarizes everything we've said today. In order to have good health, we must have good blood, for the blood is the current of life. It repairs waste and nourishes the body. When supplied with the proper food elements, 
and cleansed and vitalized by contact with pure air, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. The better the circulation, the better will this work be accomplished. I hope that today you have learned something new and I know that it can become a little bit confusing with all the technical details and all the pictures of little things like cells. As the questions pop up in your mind, please feel free to let us know. Share your comments and your questions in the comment section of this video or contact us directly through the contact details on our website. We would love to hear your comments so that we can answer these questions and other people can also learn from them. As you continue on your journey to protect every cell in your body, I hope that you are going to continue on your quest for knowledge. Knowledge that equips you with an empowering tool to make healthy choices and to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle. Thank you for joining us again today. All the best with your, um, with your body renovation project and uh, we hope to see you again next time.